So let's see how to create a design of experiment. So the first thing you have to do is go to insert and then create design. If you can click, you will get a design experiment wizard where you have several tabs. And the first tab is start. So you will have to enter a name for your design, like test, for example. And then you will have to select the goal. So here you have the screening goal, which will uh, allow you to get um, the main effect of each factor. Then you have screening with interaction, where you will get the main effect and also the interaction between the factors. And then optimization is more for response surface analysis. In the description tab, you can uh, write some description. So here I can just type taste of the DOE module. And here in the history field, uh, I have some information that has been entered automatically. So then I go to define variables. Here I can enter uh, my variable, so my design variable first. Uh, the first one I can call experimentation time. And it's a design variable. There is no constraint. It has continuous level. So I need here to enter the continuous level. For example, 95, 25 to 95. And I click on OK. I will add the next one, which is uh, mixing speed. Also, no constraints and continuous. And this one varies from 70 to 130. The last uh, design variable is working input. And this one varies from 6.5 to 14.5. Then I can add my response variable. And I will have two. One is volume. And the next one is firmness. And it's a response variable. I don't have to add any non-controllable variable in this example. So I will go to the next step. Choose the design. So here, um, I have forgotten to select an optimization, so I'm selecting an optimization now. And as you see, the design that is, select, uh, that is uh, suggested in bold is optimization of responses with three or five levels. And I can go to different uh, mode, I have beginner and expert mode. So if I go in expert mode, I will have the name of the design. So I know it's a central composite or box banking design. Uh, if I change, I will get a warning so that I know that it's not the best design I can select. So I go back to the one that, were, that was suggested. Then I go to the next tab, design details. And here I have four choices. I have three different central composite design. Uh, circumscribed, that is the default one, inscribed, spaced, and box bank and design. Here I can get some information about all well performed design. So I will just select the default value one. In additional experiment tab, I can uh, decide to replicate sample, cre create some center sample, or add some reference samples. Oh, here by default I have three center samples, which is good. And I'm not going to replicate anything, so I can just set the default value. In the randomization tab, I have uh, the list of the variable, and here, as you can see, they are all randomized because I have yes in the column randomized. If I want to not randomize everything, I can just click on detail randomization, and then uh, click on and click, for example, the fermentation time. So then I click OK, and if I re-randomize the fermentation time, which is the first. Uh, variable, as you see, as level group by uh, each level. So then I can go to the next tab, summary, which gives me some information about my design, so how many main experiments, star experiments, center experiments, etc. Uh, here I can uh, put the test the polar power of my design. But I, here I'm just going to go to the design table and here I have the design table that is displayed in randomized order, but I can change that to standard order. And for the, the design display mode, I have actual value or design level. So as you see here, if I click to design level, I get the X matrix for my design. So I will just uh, click on actual values now. 
uh, I've already done finish, and when I do that, I get two new tables that are created in my project navigator. The first one is test response, that's where I'm supposed to put the responses, and the second one is test design, which is my design. There are different uh, subdivisions of uh, this design. I have the samples that are divided into different types of samples, and also the columns that are divided in different types of uh, models. So now I will uh, just enter the responses. I will make a nice copy paste from Excel. And it is done. And now I can just analyze my data. So I go to task and analyze. And the last option here is analyze design matrix. So I select this option and I get a wizard with two tabs. The first one is method where I can select either to analyze my design of experiment with the classical method, which are MLR and Chefe. And otherwise, I can select PLS analysis. So here, we'll select the classical method. In model input, I have to select first the predictor, so that's the matrix uh, that is the design. So here it's called test design. And then I have the responses here, where I have to select the test response. And for the model, I have different type of model. But I can just select here a two variable interaction and quadratic effect. So when this is done, I can click on OK. And I will be asked if I want to uh, plot the results. So I will just say yes. And here I get my results. As you see, there is a new node that has been added to the project navigator. And it contains uh, the whole data, some results matrix, and some plots. So here I am in the overview plot. So I get here the um, ANOVA table. And as you see, I have to check first on my model uh, if the p-value is below 5%. So here it's below 5%, so which means that my model is, is good, I can trust it. So then I can look at all the different sources of variation um, that are first the main effect, and then the interaction, and then um, the the square terms. So here, as you see, uh, one uh, effect is really significant, below 5%. It's uh, B. And then we have some um, p-value between 5 and 10%. That's why they are in yellow. So they may be significant. Uh, so for A, and then for a lot of interaction. Uh, C is not significant. And uh, C square neither. Is significant. So we can think that C is not very important. The second uh, plot is the response surface. And below the response surface, you have the response surface generator. So here you can select um, which variable you want to show uh, for uh, the design variable, and then which response variable you want to show. So here we are looking at volume, but if I click here, I can click on Regenerate, and I will see for the second uh, response variable, which is the firmness. Also, here I can change uh, this value to any value between 6.5 and 14.5. So I will just take 6.5, for example, and click on Generate Surface. So here, my table, my response surface is changing automatically. Then I have a lot of other plots uh, that give me some information about how well um, my model is, uh, is performing. So here I have the diagnostic table, but I can uh, look into um, it in a different way. So I will just look at the residual overview so to see if my model is performing well. So here I see that all my residuals are following the normal distribution, which is good. And here I can see, for example, the residual in experimental order, and I can see that there is no uh, bias. So I may say that the model is quite good. Also, at the bottom here, I should have uh, the R square that tells me if uh, my model is a good fit or not. So here I have 0 0.88, which is not that bad. So um, that is that was very quick, but that was how to create and analyze uh, design of experiment in Anfanga.